So what is flow? What's a flow zone? What is being in the zone? What is that from a facilitative perspective? How can we help people get into a state of flow? That's what I'm going to talk about in this episode of Facilitation Fridays. I'm Kalani Das, your host and teacher here at World Drum Club. World Drum Club. Okay, so flow. You've probably heard of it. It was made popular by an author. I'm going to screw up this name. Mihail Csikszentmihalyi. It's the best I got right now. He wrote a book called Flow, The State of Optimum Human Performance. And it, it popularized this idea that there is this balance uh, or this kind of state that we can reach where we're at a high performing level. And what he means by that is that we're creative, we're um, executing tasks in a comfortable way, we have a sense of freedom, but we're also uh, challenged the right amount. And it feels good to be in that zone. People often call it a zone or a flow state. And so in this episode, I'm going to talk about what we can do as facilitators to help our participants get into that zone, because that's a good place to be. So let me define um, one way you can think about flow and the flow zone. And I talk about this in great detail in my book, um, The Way of Music creating sound connections in music therapy. So if you want to know more and get into it a little bit deeper, you can get that book. Uh, But here it is. Um, If you think about a graph, right, a chart, graph, challenge level on one axis and skill level on the other axis, our flow zone is actually a horizontal line, a 45 degree angle zone going right up the middle in between the two axi. Is it axi? It's not axisauruses, I know that. So let's see why that is. If somebody is, let's say, a five on the challenge level, but they're only a one on the skill level, they're just, you know, right there near the zero level of skill. They're very low skill. They just started doing something, learning about something, and then they have a five level challenge. What's going to be happening with them? They're going to be stressed out. Uh, what we call stressed out. Now, stress, stressors are coming in from our environment. How we feel about it is we have anxiety, right? We have, uh, we call it stress. It's actually anxiety. Uh, Confusion, uh, fight or flight response sometimes. Um, We might give up on a task uh, because it might be too much to handle. Uh, All sorts of bad things, bad feelings can start to happen when we're over challenged. Similarly, if we have a lot of skill, if we're way down here like at eight or seven on a skill level, we've been doing something, we know it, we're, we've, we've worked to build our skills, and then we're under challenged, we only have a one or two challenge, we're going to be out of that flow zone. We're going to be over here in the boredom area. And what happens in the boredom area for people and I can attest to this as a, somebody who felt under-challenged in elementary school, and you've probably heard of kids that get under-challenged sometimes, is you start acting out because you're looking for things to do. So you can be bored, for one. But what actually ends up happening, boredom is not necessarily a behavior, right? That's a feeling or an internal state. What happens on the external is usually not good in terms of productivity or working together because what people do is they just say, ah, this sucks, right? Um, Like the classic bored teenager. Uh, Or they look for other things to do. And that that can even be trying to sabotage the whole situation because for them, it sucks. Um, They look for, you know, other things. Um, We call that challenge seeking behavior sometimes, but it's not always productive. So somebody who's not being challenged enough can have, according to the whole can be just as problematic as somebody who's overchallenged. So now let's look at what we can do as a facilitator. And I'll put this in musical perspective, but this applies to any kind of facilitative process, whether you're working with a large group of people, you're a manager, or you're even just working, you know, in a family, talking to or uh, you know, you know, your family members, or this could be with just between you and another person, even um, how you work with them in relationships. Overchallenged, right? Somebody's 
really high on the challenge scale, they're low on the skill scale, obviously we want to get them into the flow zone and not in, you know, out of the, we want to get them out of the stress zone. So of course, the logical thing is to lower the challenge level. We could also raise the skill level, but that's harder to do in the moment, right? The easiest thing to do in the moment is accept somebody's skills where they are. We can certainly recommend that they improve them, give them ways to improve them, give them homework to do, give them resources, hope they, you know, improve. But what you can do as a facilitator is give them lower challenge, simplifying tasks, uh, giving them a modification, giving them an adaptation, uh, like a different way to relate to the task, maybe give them, um, you know, something that's just, yeah, something uh, like a piece, maybe break it down. Uh, we call this scaffolding sometimes. So the, they're not doing the full thing. They're just going to do a piece of it. And then they can add another piece and add another piece uh, over time. Uh, or even, you know, pretty quickly, if you break things down, for example, if you want to have somebody singing a song on pitch and in time, that's the goal, right? That might be too challenging for some people. So what I would do is let's get, first of all, let's get rid of the words and just have the melody. Then let's get rid of the time and the tempo and the rhythm and just have free form melody and focus on hitting each note in the melody. Then when we can do that, let's put it in rhythm. Then when we've got those two things, let's add the words back in or Another way, just for, just do the words. You know, most songs are like a poem, so let's just say it like a poem. Get the words, then we can put it into rhythm. Words and rhythm, then we can add the melody. So do you see what I'm doing here? So we call that scaffolding um, and just building, you know, taking breaking apart a musical uh, task and then putting it back together. And then hopefully while the person or the student is in the flow zone the entire time. That would be the best case scenario. All right, similarly, if somebody is under challenged, right, they've got a lot of skill, and you've probably seen this, if you have teenagers, you're definitely seeing this sometimes. Uh, they've got a lot of skill and they're under challenged. Of course, that's easy to fix. We can give them more challenge. Uh, or, and or, we can give them the freedom to self-assign, to increase their own challenge. And you see this, people will often exhibit what we call challenge-seeking behaviors. I was facilitating a, a music therapy session recently, and there was a client who I had given an instrument, and lo and behold, I turn around, and now she's got another, she's, she's actually getting more instruments and bringing them into her own process, her own environment, because she could do more. So she was actually under-challenged, and I was happy to see that she was self-assigning. She wasn't waiting for me, um, she was just grabbing stuff and, and giving herself more complexity, more challenge. And that to her was very interesting and she was really plugged in. So you can see these things happening. Um, not too hard to give somebody more challenge. One example I like to use uh, or I'll give to people is uh, have them play a rhythm on a hand drum, for example, basic rhythm. And then once they can do that, if, they're, if they feel like they've got that down, they need a little more challenge. Okay, now let's have a conversation while you're playing that or sing a song, but keep playing that rhythm. And for most people, that is going to be a pretty high level. If you're a you know, professional musician, percussionist, uh, and a singer, and you've been doing it, that's not really that hard. But for most people, that can be a big jump. So that's a way to help get them back in the flow zone. Because remember, it doesn't matter if you're at a one and a one, like a one skill, one challenge level, right? Low skill, low challenge, or you're at a high skill, high challenge level, because both of those people are in that 45 degree kind of channel, right? That flow zone. Both people are in the flow zone. One is low skilled, low challenge. One is high skilled, high challenge. It doesn't matter. It's not a contest to see who can be higher up in the flow zone. The flow zone is the flow zone, right? It doesn't matter where you are. So that's the good news. So your job as a facilitator, teacher, therapist, whatever you're doing, is to help your students, participants, clients, um, spend as much time as possible in the flow zone. All right? That makes sense, right? Because they're feeling good. They're performing, you know, at a higher level. 
I don't mean performing for an audience. I mean, they're, you know, they're into whatever they're into and they're doing something cool and new and fun. Another feature of flow is that, you know, the person is doing something novel. In other words, they're, think about this, like if you're a skier or a surfer and you're going down your hill or you're riding the wave and you are trying out something that you've never done before. You're trying out that next move. You know, you want to get that next kind of trick. You want to get that little, that turn or the flip or the whatever it is. And, you know, you're almost falling, but you're not falling. Or maybe once in a while you fall and you get back up and you're back in it and you try again. Right on that edge, that is what we talk about being on the flow zone as well. Because you're creating, you're using your skills, you have the right amount of challenge, um, but there's something novel about it too. There's something fresh. You haven't done it before. All right, I hope this all makes sense. Lastly, I want to give you a few ways to know if somebody's in the flow zone or if they're in one of those two other areas. So let's talk about the stress area. Fairly easy to spot when people are in a stress, you know, they're having a stress response or they're in the stress, we'll call it the stress zone. Um, what do you see? So as a facilitator, or teacher or therapist, you're going to look and you're going to see what? You're going to see probably what we call a furrowed brow, right? You can see a little line right here or several. Um, you might see a flat affect, right? They're trying to figure it out. They're really thinking. They're working hard. Um, not so happy. You might see uh, jerky movements, right? Not The movements are not smooth and fluid. You might see the person stopping altogether, maybe starting, but stopping, starting and stopping, starting and stopping because they're not able to really do it. So they're trying to restart, restart, um, stop and get their bearings. And you might see them abandon the task altogether or whatever it is they're doing. And just as the person who needs more, more challenge might self-assign, uh, the person who needs, who needs less challenge might also self-assign at a lower level. So you might see all those things if the person is in... Um, a state where they're over-challenged. Similarly, under-challenged, uh, they might be looking around, um, making more, more than average uh, social connections because they're just bored, so they're looking around, like talking to people or initiating um, conversations that don't really enhance the experience. It's more of a distraction or just something because they're bored. Uh, they might, again, abandon the task because, you know, it's just not doing it for them. Uh, you certainly could see uh, challenge-seeking behavior, like adding challenge, adding, you know, complexity to what they're doing, adding layers like singing, you know, or dancing or something, you know, adding other things on top of drumming, for example, if it's drumming, um, that kind of thing. What you will see also in the flow zone is smooth movements, n bright affect, or at least, you know, s kind of a neutral and up affect, so brighter affect, um, you'll see some social connection, you know, in other words, eyes up, head up, eyes up, looking around, making social connections with people, not necessarily like the person who's under challenged, who wants to do something else, but uh, socializing in a way that's productive and comfortable and satisfying for that person, not distracting. Uh, and um, yeah, other things that go along, you know, smiles, kind of like they're getting some wins in there, you know, moments of success. Okay, if you want to know more about that and how to facilitate that, including how to recognize, you know, flow zone, over-challenged, under-challenged, uh, other, other aspects of this whole um, formula that goes into what is flow and how can we promote it, you can, again, check out my book, The Way of Music. Uh, creating Sound Connections in Music Therapy. It's written for mainly for music therapists, but it actually is a great book for music teachers or facilitators of music or facilitators of anything. Um, you can check out that. And then if you'd like more uh, direct contact with me, you can join my email list at kalanimusic.com. Sign up there. Or if you're in the continental U.S., or the, not the continent, I think if you're just in the U.S., you can text the word DRUM, D-R-U-M, to 66866 and join the list there. And I send out newsletters with special links to top secret information only for those members, all right? If you haven't already and you, um, you want to support the channel, please do so at patreon.com slash Kalani. You can leave us a tip there, just a little bit to help 
you know, keep this going. Um, I post all this stuff in goodwill. And I love it when people support the channel. And I want to thank all of you. We've been getting a lot of support lately. New signups, people joining. And I want to say thank you for doing that. Um, it means a lot to me. I do appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah, sign up for the, for the channel if you'd like. You know, throw us a few bucks a month if you can. We appreciate that. All right. Leave your kind comments below if you have anything to add that will help our World Drum Club community. Uh, it's much appreciated. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Kalani. Thanks for watching.